everyone. Welcome back to the Grit Daily Like a Boss podcast. And we have got a special guest here dialing in from Mexico. Simone Cohen has had a life-changing experience about 15 years ago that prompted him to take the path that he's taken now. And it's going to be some terrific insights for all of you who are listening. Simone has founded the company called Enco Logistics. It's a supply and logistics company, but he's also been the former president of YPO, which brings together the global leaders who are striving to be the most extraordinary CEOs that they can be. He's been named Mexico's most trusted CEO. He's an author and has just released a book called Fulfilled that we'll get into in just a moment. So with that, we're going to want to say a nice warm welcome to Simone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laureline, for having me here. It's a true pleasure. Well, we're going to get right into this, but of course, we've got to do our proper greeting. So, bienvenida, Simón. Estamos muy emocionados de que estés aquí. Nuestros oyentes tienen suerte hoy. So, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled. Thanks. Well, before we dive into, you know, life-changing experiences, that tends to be kind of a heavy way to start a podcast. Let's roll back a bit and talk about your executive leadership role with respect to ENCO and at YPO. Tell us a little bit about what you've done here with respect to your senior positions as an executive. Sure. Thank you very much. So first of all, um, being a CEO, it's like kind of a lonely position, right? Sometimes you're driving by yourself. You have to take decisions. You're there thinking about what's next and suddenly you have to just uh, give it a call, like boom. So um, to be surrounded by people that are better than you, that creates an atmosphere where you can just uh, uh, get the best version of yourself. So um, I decided to do that while joining YPO back in 2004 and it has been a tremendous experience. So um, it's been a difficult journey like as everyone else but uh, at the end of the ride, I think it's the most incredible journey I have ever had in my life. So you learn, you meet people, you grow, you, you interact, you travel. I mean, the experience is just absolutely amazing. So um, while being a CEO, the most important thing is, again, to be surrounded by great people, by amazing human beings and people that are better than you in several ways. So if you surround yourself by five clever people, you'll be the sixth. If you surround yourself, uh, excuse my French, with five stupid people, you will be the sixth. So get surrounded by great people and you will, uh, better, you, you will be easier to, to succeed uh, in the long run. Oh, that's exactly it, right? It's all about strong leadership and recognizing you know, that you can't do everything and you've got to get it right as a CEO, but you're not the one who has to be right. But not every leader takes that position. So that's probably a great reason why you've had tremendous success that you've had, Simon, because you adopt that leadership Thank principle. Thank you. We have two ears and one mouth to listen double and speak half. That's uh, something I practice every day. We have to listen to every single person in our companies. We have to listen to, to our teammates, to every single person that it's right there fighting and getting, you know, uh, all, the, all the, the, the shipments and the cargo and the loads. And uh, they have the answers. It's not you as a CEO. So I just, what I did as a leader is I turned around the, the pyramid. So it's not them serving me, it's me serving them. So that's, that's exactly the fundamentals for our philosophy that's uh, called high performance, happy people. And let's get into that because last year, as I understand, the London Business School and Harvard Business Review were so enamored by this model that HBR actually did a case study on it to make it available more broadly because you've really dialed into something about this obsessive 24-7 work mentality and the high stress that it leads to. Talk to us about the case study and your high-performance happy people model, please. Sure. Thank you, Laurelyn. Um in 2010, it was the first case study written by John Mullins by London Business School, and it was a great success. It was a successful case because we were talking about how to maintain great relationships while making great business. So first of all, we were very focused on the human side of the business. And when you focus on being a good, a good person, you know, stick to your values and go in a straight line, having integrity, not cheating, not bribing. In an atmosphere like in a country like Mexico, where, you know, there's a lot of corruption, Latin America, Far East is very complicated, but we decided to go in straight line. 
So it caught the attention of LBS and they, they, they did a great job writing a case in 2010. That was a long time ago. And then three or four years ago, Harvard Business School by Francesca Gino, an amazing professor at HBS, she decided to write her story and we did a great job. And in early 2020, they published it for the first time. And then, you know, from there, it has been incredible. They, they made a video uh, a documentary of our company, the way we take care of people, the way we exponentialize their talent, the way we uh, take care of their families and we think consciously of how to become better human beings. And that creates an atmosphere where they can be, uh, become the best version of themselves. High performance, happy people has three main pillars that as a consequence goes to the fourth pillar. So the first pillar, it's uh, wellness. Sleep well, eat well, exercise. The second one is mindfulness. Mindfulness, if you have your, your brains at peace, if you sleep tight, if you rest, if you meditate, if you have a spiritual connection. The third one is happiness. Go there, go out there and have fun. Enjoy your time with your family, with your friends, laugh, smile, enjoy life. And when you're in those three pillars strong, the possibility that you succeed at your work is amazingly big. So what we do is like that will take you to the fourth pillar, which is to become a high performer. So a logistics company that it's not a logistics company. We are a happiness company that happens to do logistics. Ooh, that's a nice twist. I don't hear that too often, not only on this show, but any other shows I listen to either. Yeah, you know, it's not common, you know, but I haven't met in my life, Laura Lynn, anyone that when you ask them, hey, you want to be happy, you have a, you want to have a happy life, they come back and they say, no, I want to suffer. You know, <laughs> it's not common. It's not common. So basically, human beings, we've, we're searching for a fulfilled life, for, for success, for being at peace. So first of all, we have to define this concept, define success, define happiness. And then you pursue that, uh, th those concepts. If you define it in a wrong way, then when you, you will be chasing something that it will be, uh, that we will take you to a different uh, destination. I'm sure many of our listeners are as curious as I am about this point, Simone. Do you see geographical differences? Any trends? No, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not. I was completely obsessed with, with making money. When I started my business back in 1998, my main goal was to become a billionaire. I really wanted to make money. I said to myself, if Jeff, Jeff Bezos can do it, I can do it. If Bill Gates can do it, I can do it. I used to be a professional swimmer. If uh, Michael Phelps can do it, I can do it. Sometimes you don't reach the same level, right? If you try for perfection, you can reach excellence, right? So, but I was, I was obsessed with money until nature you know, just uh, gave me a call and said, Simon, you have to slow down. Um, I was diagnosed with a problem in my heart while I was traveling in China. It was a horrible experience, uh, Laura Lynn. I felt like I was going to die. And uh, for several months, I was struggling with my health until one day I decided, hey, this is not living. This is not life. I need to change. And now my main goal was to make other people happy. The Dalai Lama has a tremendous quote that says, Taking care of others or thinking about others is ultimately the best way to find your own joy and to have a happy life. And that's what he calls wise selfishness. Thinking of others, trying to put everyone to success, brought me to success. As a social entrepreneur, that totally resonates with me. We're trying to help Generation Next get all of the skills that they don't get taught in school so that they can be more successful personally and professionally. So I get it. There's something there. I mean, you work hard and play hard. It's, it's a matter of balance. And I, at my first, I don't know, I would say 10 years of, of my professional experience, I was not balancing every, anything. You know, I lost the first years of my three daughters. I lost being with my wife. I lost taking care of my body, my mind. I, I, lose, I lost everything. I was just completely in another dimension, chasing for it was a rat race for money because when you chase money, for sure you will fail. 
And it is recoverable, right, for all of us who are these workaholics and are looking and saying, oh, my goodness, I've gained the COVID-19, right, 19 pounds sitting down and working 24-7. <laughs> but you're giving us this inspiration that it can be done. So if I asked you, what's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? No, you know something, because overcoming that, it's hard. It was hard. It was really hard because my body was sick. I was born with something called Wolf Parkinson White disease, which is a double electric path that I have in my heart. So what was most difficult is to try to understand that uh, the consequence is what matters. When I started the company, I was the engine of the company. And at the same time, I was the anchor of the company because it all ended at what I could do in my 24 hours, right? I was working 20 hour shifts. And it was impossible to do more because I had control over everything. And I, the more I worked, the, the more energy I, I was wasting. So when I decided to delegate and to empower people, everyone started growing. And the more they grow, the more you grow. Incredibly productive. My company is three times more productive than my competitors. Three times. So they say, hey, why? Because we know how to sleep because we know how to rest, because we know how to meditate, because we know how to eat correctly, because we know how to exercise. And then when we have to work, we work. And that's exactly what I think so many of the listeners need to hear, that there are these constructs and things can be achieved. And when you don't think that they can, right, there's a will, there's a way. You've talked about how you lost time those early years with your daughters and time with your wife. If I gave you a magic wand and said, Simon, you get to go back and change one thing from your past, what's different? Well, this is a tremendous question because I wouldn't change anything, not including the pain that I felt during that year, because that made me who I am today. So it's crazy, but the two biggest failures that I have or the worst news that I've had in my life first one was I was not going to the Olympics when I was 21. They told me you're not good enough in swimming, so you're not going to the Olympics. I thought that my life was over. I thought mm -hmm. that everything collapsed. But after receiving those bad news or terrible news for me, listen, I thrived. I started my business. I got married with the, 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 the women of my dreams. I, I decided you know, to, to dream big. I started a life. I have my three daughters. So if I would have gone to the Olympics, maybe Simon, that you know right now, you would, it would not be here. Second terrible news, you have a heart attack and you need, to, you need to thrive in a different way. So when they told me that, I thought everything was over. So that was my rebirth. So everything, including the goods and the bads, it's what makes you as a human being. So forget about uh, 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 thinking about the past. Let's, 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 let's use this word called ataraxi, ataraxi in English. I think that's, that's the correct word, which means um, forget about the past because the past brings you depression. Forget about the future because the future brings you anxiety. Ataraxi is living the moment, being present right now, enjoying what we have and how blessed we are. If you have food on your table, you're blessed. If you, are, you have somewhere to sleep, you are totally blessed. So let's enjoy that and let's value that. So uh, going back to your question, I would never change anything in my background because I love the person who I am right now. I like it a lot. I'm sitting here very carefully, hanging on your every word and absorbing it because I believe there are no such things as coincidences. And so hearing this from you at this time and where I'm in my journey, it's so powerful. And I hope all the other listeners are benefiting from it as well. Let's turn things around. You're helping us and giving us all of this tremendous insight and inspiration about the struggles that you've overcome and where there can be happiness, there can be productivity and success and all of these other parameters that we're striving for, but we're doing it in the wrong order. Tell us a little bit about the book that you've got, uh, that you've just released here. That's really exciting. That book is called Fulfilled, The Secrets of an Entrepreneur Who, in Search of Success, Found Happiness. Tell us about your new book, Simon. Thank you, Laura Lynn. Uh, it's my new baby. You know, I'm not a writer. I, I wrote it from my heart. Let me tell you a story. Back in October 2019, my dad was, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. 
He was really, really sick. We went to Jacksonville, Florida, and he got a brain surgery. Then I came back to Mexico. I gave a presentation in front of 10,000 people. But the question in my mind was, how can I speak about happiness when my dad is dying? How can I talk about being fulfilled when I'm losing the person that I admire the most? So I gave my most incredible speech that day in front of 10,000 people. And when I arrived home that day on November 6, 2019, I spoke with my wife and I said, my dad was guiding me throughout the presentation. It was just incredible. It was like super fluent. I've got a standing ovation. Everything was perfect. Uh, I went to bed that day uh, after midnight. And at four in the morning, the phone rang. And it was my brother-in-law telling me that my mother-in-law, who was my second most incredible person in the world, passed away. So imagine back-to-back -back hits. And I was thinking on happiness. So I started defining happiness, uh, Laura Lynn. And when I defined happiness for myself, I spoke with my dad. He was, he was taking all this chemo and radiation and all that stuff. And he told me, Simon, you have to write a book. So I started telling my story from my heart in this book. And when I finished it, it was October 6th, 2020, okay? And October 7th, 2020, my dad passed away. So imagine the energy that it's in this book. So all my heart and my soul is in there. I wrote it from my heart. You will cry, you will laugh. So it's my new baby. I love it. I'm just so proud of it. All right, listeners, you heard Simon. You can find his new book, Fulfilled, on Amazon. Take a look by Simon Cohen. So, Simon, I'm, I'm sorry that you've had such hardships with the losses of your mother-in-law and of your father recently, but I'm very anxious to dig into your book and be inspired by all of the personal insights and the vulnerability that you're offering to the world through this book. So thank you so much for sharing that. Last question. Thank you. Last question here. Now, this is this is the fun one, right? We've had, a, you know, some heavy topics shared and but again, hope, right? We all want to strive to be happier. Last question. If our listeners got a peek into your closet and there was one pair of shoes that best represented your personality, tell us if it's a pair of boots, stilettos, sneakers, flats, flip flops or something else. Definitely flip flops. That's me enjoying life comfortably <laughs> <laughs> i like it just being carefree and happy right we all think about time at the beach like you said you absolutely just had a wonderful long weekend with your family at the beach and have tan and i'm of course so pasty i'm glowing down here in my basement so good for you taking those flip-flops and finding happiness absolutely all right everyone Thank you so much this to Simon Cohen here, who has shared his model about high performance and happy people with his new book, Fulfilled, which you can find on Amazon. Also want to make sure you subscribe to Grit Daily News and to our podcast. Thank you for being on the show, Simon. Thank you, Laurelyn. It's my super pleasure. Blessings to everyone. And thanks for your audience. Everyone listening to this podcast, just keep doing it. It's the best in the world. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, Simon. Thank you. And how about that fantastic intro by Touch Circle?